Section five? Section five it is. Cameras and video gear and all the paraphernalia that goes with it. Now this won't interest every hunter, but I'm sure some would like to know um, some of the gear that I find that works, some doesn't, and what I end up taking with me, and why I end up taking it with me. Now first of all, my main camera that I actually took in this time, it was something that's reasonably new to me, and for ages uh, I've been using Panasonic cameras and they've been really, really good. The image stabilisation has been really good. Um, and obviously with the progression from uh, high, high definition to ultra high definition, in other words from 1080p to 4K, um, as much as I still just upload all my videos, excuse me, on YouTube in 1080p or high definition, I'm starting to film in 4K. Um, and it just gives me a little bit more options when it comes to cropping in uh, and the downside though is most of the 4K cameras only shoot in 30 frames a second, um, which is a little bit slow. Well, actually, it's way too slow when you want to sort of do any slow-mo or slow it down. It starts to get a little bit jerky, and you sometimes will see that in some of my videos. Anyway, a little camera, well, it's not so little in comparison to some of my others that uh, impress me, uh, is this new Sony... Uh, it's the FDR AX53 or 55. Um, there's a few different versions of this. The hard thing now with many cameras is to get something that actually has a viewfinder because when I'm zooming, a eyepiece viewfinder is on its own. Picture quality, absolutely fantastic. But what sold me with this, and I'm hoping we'll pick this up here, is the BOSS image stabilisation on this camera. It is phenomenal. Now I took tripods in with me, but I hardly ever use them. Because just watch this when I open this, this up. You watch what happens with the lens. Now this thing is absolutely incredible. And it's what, it just takes out majority of your movements and it makes what often would be non-usable footage into quite usable. So this camera overall um, has sort of impressed me. It's, it's no professional camera but it's sort of m moving towards the prosumer sort of like the... It's a handy cam and it's portable still. It's a little bit bulkier than my other cameras but I was impressed um, and more so the battery life. I ended up taking the standard battery in, plus I bought another two batteries from Better Bat. Uh, now they're down in Flemington. Have a look at it. I tell you, they are they are a good shop. They offer, I think, uh, 400 day warranty or something thereabouts on their batteries. They make batteries for all cameras, video cameras, radio. It's worth looking at. It's Better Bat. I think it's Bat with a double T. Uh, look them up. They do it online, uh, most things are online, but you can pick up as well. And I'll be honest with you, I've got no affiliation with them, but I buy all my batteries from them. I think I've had one failure and no hesitation, they just replace the battery. Long story short, I took two extra batteries in here for this. Uh, in the end, this thing was so good on battery. Uh, the biggest thing is, just like most cameramen, don't sit there after you've done the video playing back, playing back. Just put confidence in what you've taken and just go with it because in the end if you're playing back using the screen all the time you're going to run your battery flat but if you just use the viewfinder uh, the eye, eyepiece viewfinder which i do quite a bit especially when i'm zooming in um, i was amazed how good um, this little battery actually worked and in most cases this one battery almost lasted most of the day so that camera very well worth looking into now, my little action camera, most people say to me, get a GoPro, stick it on your head, do this, do that. Well, I've tried just about all of them. And I'll be honest with you, um, another little Sony product, which has impressed me, and I was almost set on buying another GoPro, but this little uh, FDRX 3000 has got image stabilization in it as well. Possibly not as good as what this is, his boss system, but it's along the same lines. Whack this on a little uh, selfie stick, 
and you are good to go. And look, everyone has their own methods of how they film and whatever. I tend to find most of these sort of little things, little cameras aren't to be used on their own, but they add another perspective. And bottom line is, if I end up holding this up here like this or whatever, most of the times you can't see, it's not in shot. Obviously I carry it around with me or whatever, but the video quality on this, again, it shoots 4K if required. And actually on the last trip, I did shoot it at 4K. Again, 30 frames a second, which is a bit of a downside. Charging all of these, I use the battery packs that I mentioned previously, the Anchor, the 26,800 milliamp hour, and the RAV power, uh, which is around the 20,000 milliamp hour. Both work fantastic, and I'll never run out of power uh, over the whole trip. Uh, the other camera, which is my still camera, and I use this a bit for doing some time lapse, Probably didn't put enough time and effort into this that I normally would. And this is my Fuji, my Fuji X-T1. Fantastic cameras. I can't say enough about them. For still cameras, their lenses are second to none. Uh, this is, I only had, took the 60mm uh, 1.4. Um, I love the camera. And in all fairness, I would, if I had the cash, I'd go out and buy an X-T2 because I believe the video quality on that now is fantastic. Probably a little bit bulky to cart in. Uh, I did use um, this new quick release thing that you've probably seen stuck up on my chest here. On the, well, this was an eBay one. You can buy um, more expensive ones. Basically just a shoe on the bottom of your camera. Clips in. Uh, you can lock it in too by that. Um, it's just a matter of backing these off and slipping it onto whatever belt that you want. The only thing I would say is it's probably, these could have been a little bit longer so you could go onto a thicker, a thicker strap, but um, most cases I never had an issue with it and it worked really well. Uh, I think this is only about $20. You can pay a lot more, again, eBay. So don't count that out. Uh, now, getting good audio when you're out in the bush is often a, an issue. And again, I took this purely to use with this camera. And I don't think I got it out of the bag once. The audio quality from this mic was surprisingly good. Not fantastic. But when you're using it for a hunting situation out in the bush, you want to keep things simple. In most cases, all I did was I had the camera stuck up and holding it there like that, talking into it. Now you're probably sick to death of me doing that, but I can tell you now, it worked quite well. Actually, I think it worked really well. Very impressed with this camera. Not overly expensive. Um, well worth looking into. Now, where I said I didn't use the X-T1 a lot, uh, purely because I was doing more video, but if I was to buy a little compact camera now, uh, one that would probably do really good video as well, I would seriously, now I know I'm starting to sound like a little bit of a Sony rep, but I'm actually starting to swing back towards them. Um, the little, I think they don't quote me, it's the uh, new RXV, I think it's 100 Mark 5 or version 5. Uh, very impressive uh, little camera. It is small. Uh, it's like anything, the battery life is sort of um, reasonably short on there. I've actually got a feeling it runs the same battery as this thing. But video quality is fantastic. It's a, well, look, put it this way, look into it. Um, I'm seriously considering it for a little compact camera. Video quality, 4K, uh, the focusing system on it is absolutely uh, really quick. It's, I think it's got around about a 24 to 70 mil uh, lens, a 1.8 uh, aperture, and I think it's a 20 meg, I think uh, one inch sensor on it. But definitely worth looking into. The, now, when it comes to storage, I took uh, a few memory cards and in the end I thought I was going to have to do what most photographers hate having to do is dump and erase their memory cards and put everything in the reliance on their hard drive. Well in the end I took a couple of 64 gig cards in uh, for each thing and that was actually enough even in 4k. Uh, 
one thing to remember too with these new cameras they've got this new processing of the video even though it's in ultra high definition it's not so reliant uh, on the card the quality of the card to actually get it to uh, you don't drop any frames they are really good they don't need to have such good quality cards in them as many other cards because of the fast uh, or the conversion or whatever they use um, this thing now this <laughs> I would buy another one hands down like anyone that wants to buy a portable hard drive um, if you take a lot of photos and you're out and about and whatever and you want some backup this thing is fantastic Western Digital my passport wireless um, basically at the end of each day I got or in the next morning I got each one of my SD cards whack it in there it automatically dumps it onto here date by date day by day uh, you don't have to do anything and then the best part about it once it's on there you get a few visual lights to tell you that it's been downloaded or uploaded onto it you can get your iPhone or whatever through the app and you can watch your videos um, in a couple of days where I was feel a little bit lazy early in the morning that's what I did simple as that so it was quite good um, it's good to review some of your footage at the end of the day but like I said don't get in the habit of doing it during the day don't burn your batteries reviewing uh, videos you just don't need to do it now if you don't want to take in cameras like a still camera don't ever count out your smartphones your iPhones now often people say to me how do you get such steady footage and <laughs> whatever well there's a few little things on the market that you can buy now and again look on eBay but this thing here uh, like it's like a little powered gimbal you can basically just turn it on and there you go this thing is as cool as cool when I get my hold on Siri I don't want Siri happening there just hold on I'll turn this on go to my camera and then you can see or well, hopefully you can see this thing is absolutely cool you can set it to different modes but it is powered you can't let go of this it'll spin on you but I can tell you now that um, don't count out just using your iPhone or your, any of your smartphones. They are overly expensive. Look online, um, powered gimbal or something like that, do a search. Uh, I think even JB Hi Fi and that sell them now, but these are fantastic. Um, you can just hold them up to yourself, do a selfie or whatever you want to do, but they are really, really good so you don't have to have all the best camera gear to get the steadiest shots now tripods I ended up taking I didn't take this smaller one because in the end Ben said I'll take your big your big spotter in it might come in handy so in the end I took my ever reliable carbon fiber about the same way it's probably 100 grams heavier but this has a better head, uh, just the Gitzo head for the spotter. It's absolutely fantastic. Obviously, quick release. The Vortex spotter, the Razor, it's no baby. But I can tell you now, it is an awesome piece of gear. And um, it probably attributes to a lot of the longer range footage that I get. Again, just using the iPhone. Uh, just a quick release. If I can do this without dropping it and then basically just lock it on like so uh, the best part about this Gitzo head is it's one it's one thing you wind it, turn it, whatever you want to do and then you just lock that and I found that has been the best for a spotting scope and I've looked at all different tripods, tripod heads uh, and that by far has worked so well for me so really all my camera gear worked well I probably would have reduced a bit uh, next time I, I definitely probably wouldn't have taken the XT1 um, I probably could have almost got away with not taking the hard drive microphone and the dead cat uh, wind noise reducer I think you'd for the size and weight of it, I think you'd be silly not to take it just in case you got a really windy day because audio is always your issue but other than that, uh, again, 
I had no real failures. Uh, everything charged well, everything worked well. Uh, a couple of things that I thought were just bonuses, um, one being the hard drive um, and this camera. This camera, this uh, Sony camera with its BOSS stabilisation hardly ever required um, a tripod. So I could, probably could have done without one in all fairness and possibly next time I would probably just take a little gorilla pod or maybe just a small small little tripod because obviously they're the things that carry take a fair bit of uh, weight and carrying. Anyway that's about it for the camera gear.